In this video we'll show you how we can import a DXF file directly into Parkmaster's Wire EDM module. So from the desktop we've started the EDM module and we've said start a new job and now we'll go into File, Import, find the DXF file, the thumbnail view down here shows us the file and we click Open and we need to specify that the units that we're working in, in this case, are inches. The import method, as with all the Partmaster modules, is that the default is for it to create contours using the lines and arc that it finds within the DXF file. OK, so that's the DXF file that's read in. The zero position has been taken as the zero on the DXF file. If we right click and we check number spans, then we can see that the system has started over here. Span number one goes this way, two, three, four, five, six, etc. So we know which direction we're going and we know where we're going to start from. When you read in a DXF file into the Wire EDM module, it automatically displays any contours that it's found here. So it's found a single contour and it's produced a machining operation based on that contour. Now we need to go into that machining operation and set up the various options that we need. So to do that we double click the entry here. So the first thing that we need to give it is a Z thickness, we'll call this one millimeter. The cutting direction can be forward or can be reverse. The offset can be none, left or to the right. So the forward direction in this case was anti-clockwise and if we're cutting around the inside of there then the offset needs to be on the left. As a default the wire will start at the zero position and move at feed rate out to the first start point. If we want to see how that works we can simply simulate that so we get a single cut starting from the zero going out this way but we can do various things to modify that. So if we go back into the go round command, under options, we can specify that we want a pilot hole position a distance away from the start of the contour. When we say pilot hole, there doesn't physically need to be a hole there, it's just a starting position a distance away from the first element of the contour. So let's have that as say half an inch. Lead in, lead out, the default is linear. We can specify a line and arc, as represented by the diagram here, or we can specify that we want a rectangular movement. Some machine tools, if we go back to the line and arc, don't like that approach because if they have to apply wire compensation, they can't do it on a move which is tangential to the second one. So in that case, you'd need to use rectangular and arc. But in our case, we'll use linear and arc. Set up the radius, and the same thing for the lead out, set up the radius there. So now when we simulate that, what will now happen is we'll get a rapid motion from the zero to the start of the lead in motion, which will go around here and cut. So this is looking at it in plan view. If we want to look at it in isometric view, we can do. And when we do that, we can animate the wire so we can see exactly how it's going to cut that shape. Now on this video you may not see a representation of the wire moving on the screen but on the full software of course you will do. On the right hand side here we have the XY and UV zero positions and the maximum cutting distance so we can therefore have an idea of how long it's going to take to cut. So that's just producing a simple two axis shape. If we wanted to we could put an angle on there for instance. So to do that, double click the go round command and under options we put in the angle. So let's have minus five. An angle, plus is to the right, minus is to the left. Now if we look at the plan view, we can see exactly how that's cutting. Okay. 
So in its simplest form, we read in the DXF file, and then we modify the go round command which has been created, and change the options that we need. As well as just being able to set the wire angle, the lead in, lead out, we can set up a number of other things as well. For instance, the approach movement. If we want to have particular generator settings when the wire is approaching, we can do. For instance, this could be flushing set to a lower pressure than cutting. We can specify a rough cut, a middle cut, and a finishing cut. If we use those different cuts, we can also use the tagging feature so that the system will stop the tag length away from the end of the contour, allow you to secure the slug before finishing off the shape. We can also set up using simple uh, two axis mode a UV scale and rotate. So, what we could do here, for instance, is if we go back to our options and take off the angle then we go into UV scale and rotate we can rotate the coordinates of the UV axis to say 20 degrees and at the same time we might want to scale them down so that has produced a different shape where the UV which is the smaller shape on the inside here is offset from the bottom shape by using the rotate feature and the scale. When it comes to cut then of course you're going to get a very odd angle but it shows you what the system is capable of. As well as being able to produce this type of wire path for generating what we call a four axis shape of course the geometry file that we read in could have separate contours of different shapes which represent the X, Y and U, V axes. There is another video in this series which shows you how to do that and also how to set up multiple cuts using the tagging feature and reversing the path. In this video we just wanted to show you how easy it is to read in a DXF file into Partmaster Wire EDM module and produce the G-code for that. And that's what we'll do next. Go into the G-code select the post processor from the list of the available ones that we've got and then run that part down here we get the G code and where it needs to it can output X, Y, U, V coordinates or it can output simple T words to specify the angle that the wire needs to go through as with the milling and turning modules within Partmaster, it has a built-in RS-232 facility, so we can send that G-code file directly down to the machine tool once we've set up a configuration file for board rates, parity, and so on. That ends this video.